Coming up next on Hands-On Windows, we're going to look at the two Copilot apps in Windows 11. That's right. There are two now. I know. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Ferrat, and this week we're going to look at the two Copilot apps in Windows 11. And yeah, you you heard that correct. There is there are two Copilot apps in Windows because one was not enough. Um, I spent about a year uh, between late 2023 and late 2024 freaking out because Microsoft added a Copilot app to Windows 11, which wouldn't normally be a big deal, but then they spent that ensuing year changing it dramatically on a really regular basis. Um, we'll talk about that in a moment. But in late last year, late 2024, it got even stranger because now there are two Copilot apps in Windows 11. So we'll take a look at why that happened and then we'll see what each of those apps does so you can determine whether you want to use them. Okay, so the first of the two is, and I put them both down here in the uh, taskbar because, you know, I <laughs> want to make myself crazy, um, is the original Copilot app, right? So if you may recall, if you did use this app, I'll just try to resize this so it looks normal on this little screen. Um, this is the the successor, I guess, to the app, that app that debuted in late 2023. The original version of this app, it was actually a pane over on the side of the screen, right? And it was non-resizable, but then it became resizable. And then you could turn it into a floating window and you used to have all these like Windows command integrations and that was going to get better, but then they took that away and then it became a native app, but it's not really a native app. It's just a, a native app wrapper around the web app that it always was and yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's hard to keep track of, but the app, uh, the app icon moved four times. It was here, it was there, it was everywhere. It was, you know, that Microsoft tried all this different stuff. So rather than fret <laughs> over that, uh, I'll just say this is the app as it is today. So this is the native app. It's really just a native app wrap around a web app. It's a front end to Copilot on the web. So built into Windows, you do all the Copilot-y type things that you want to do, whatever that might be. I'll give you a couple of ideas, I guess. But um, the way to think of this is Copilot is one of many modern AI companions that are replacements for what we used to call personal digital assistance, things like Cortana or uh, Siri, which is still around, or Google Assistant, right? And so it's very similar to OpenAI's ChatGPT. In fact, it's based on that. Um, it's similar to Gemini, which is the new Google AI Assistant. Siri's getting there. Apple is doing things on their own schedule, but they'll get there. Um, I, I've already configured this, but one of the things it does is it, can, it asks you to configure a keyboard shortcut for Alt plus Space to bring up what's called the Quick View version of this. Um, I don't like that as kind of a power user. Alt Space normally does what I'm doing here, which is right click on the current window. So you can move the thing around if it's off, you know, to the side of the screen or whatever. It's kind of useful for people like me that have been around for a long time and remember that, but most people don't use it. So um, I have actually configured it to work that way on this computer, which I'm a little unsettled by, but anyway, so alt space, you can see this is the quick view version. So it's kind of the small, it just appears over whatever else you're doing. So the point of this is that you're, you're probably summoning copilot because you're in the middle of something. Maybe you're on a website or at an app. You, you have a question about whatever it might be. Um, you can ask it this question and then alt space, it goes away. So that's, that's, that's cool. So what might you use this silly app for, right? Um, well, you could use it for things like, uh, you know, ask it for recipes. You're looking, you know, typically it's the answer to a question. You want information about something. Um, you know, I would like a good recipe for carrot cake. I probably spelled carrot wrong. Yep. Uh, so, but whatever. So it comes back pretty quick, right? Nice. Um, definitely going to want to check this one. Uh, make sure it's not hallucinating about a, an ingredient in there, but I don't know. It looks, I'm going to go through that one quick. It looks pretty solid. I, I, it, 
this one's kind of weird now because actually I'm writing a book about Mexico City, but uh, in the past, I would always ask for Mexico City itineraries. You could do a travel itinerary, so maybe I'll do one. For, I, don't want to, I don't use AI for the book, but uh, five-day uh, Paris itinerary, for example. Itinerary, if I could type. Um, you know, we'll do a little thinking, and here we go. Heart of Paris, et cetera, et cetera. You know, same kind of thing. You get it. So, uh, you could do budgeting with this, a workout program. You know, one of the things I'm, I'm here in Mexico City, I don't have a gym here I can go to. So, um, you know, I need a a body weight workout program kind of thing. Probably will come up with something reasonable. Uh, it's like, Paul, you weigh a lot, so this is going to work great. Um, you know, it gives me different things over some number of days, right? Pretty cool. So kind of standard. Uh, if you're a developer, I, I use this for a lot of C-sharp uh, programming things, you know, uh, Right. I mean, actually, this is built in the C sharp. Uh, write a C sharp method uh, to pull uh, the numbers out of a string. Right. So you have a string that's comprised of alphanumeric characters. You just want the number parts. Here's a line of code, and, or not a line of code, a block of code. Um, this is actually a function in C sharp, but whatever. This is a different way to do that. And uh, yeah, fun. So I, presentation's nice. By the way, you probably noticed this thing came up pretty quick, right? It's the stuff is much better than it used to be. So, so you know, your use case here will vary. Um, I don't use this type of interface myself a lot, frankly. Um, although I do use the programming capabilities in GitHub Copilot, which is based on this uh, inside Visual Studio. But this is just kind of your general purpose assistant. Okay. So the second Copilot app, uh, which is new but not new, is called Microsoft 365 Copilot. This is the app that once upon a time was called the Office app. It's that all-in-one front end to your, what used to, well, is still office.com. So you're a Microsoft 365 subscriber as a consumer, or uh, you just use the web apps. You know, you have a Microsoft account, you go to office.com, you can use the web version of uh, Word or Excel or PowerPoint or whatever. Um, and it was okay. You know, it was kind of a, it was an okay app. Um, they renamed it at some point to the Microsoft 365 app, which is a little confusing, but we learned to live with that. I mean, I thought Office was a pretty good brand. Um, and that had some limitations. Uh, there were links for the Office apps on the side, but they would always launch the web apps, even if you had the local apps installed, which is not what most people would want. Um, but now we have the Microsoft 365 Copilot app, um, and this is the icon here. It looks a lot like this icon here. Um, but when you run the app, if you have signed in as an individual with a Microsoft account, as I have here, it looks almost exactly like the old Office slash Microsoft 365 app. So even though the name has changed, a little confusing, still works. It has those app links, like I said, on the side. But if I open a new document, it should open. Yep, it opens in the local version of the app, right? The, the version that's installed on my computer, not the web version. That's ideal. So that's good. But there's this new Copilot option here on the left. I think that's, and Create's actually new too, but Create is a new front end for all of the apps where you can create something new, a document, a presentation, a workbook, et cetera. But not, that's not a big, big deal. Um, this one's coming soon. So as I record this, if you have a Microsoft 365 personal or family su uh, subscription, in the latter case, if you're the primary account holder, you're going to gain access to what used to be, well, it's still uh, Copilot Pro features or Copilot Plus features, I guess, one of the two, um, which used to be paid only, right? And so now everyone's getting a, 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 a set of AI credits every month they can use toward these Copilot activities. So this will have a chat interface built into it. So very similar to this chat interface in the regular Copilot app. The difference is that this will work against your Microsoft 365 data, which could be very useful. You can't use it today as I record this as an individual. But if you have a corporate account, and I do have one of those as well, and you sign into this app, you'll see the reason why they renamed it. Um, so for people that are working in a business that is using Microsoft 365 for businesses, governments, educational institutions, and so forth, the primary interface for Copilot is now going to be, and it's actually, I should say, Microsoft 365 Copilot is going to be here. And you, this is the default view when you sign in with that type of a commercial or, or business account. So it's, it's much like what we just did in the regular Copilot app, 
The difference is that your organization can, if they want to, and most will, uh, customize it so that it's not necessarily always grabbing information off the web, or better yet, more importantly, you'll see this little green thing here, it says enterprise data protection is enabled. And that's why there are two apps, because Microsoft's business customers, commercial customers, needed the company to ensure that nothing that happened here was going to head out into the world and allow any private data from the company to escape. And so this app is protected. It has enterprise data protection. The consumer version does not. So that's actually the reason why. Um, there's some additional features in here uh, related to the commercial versions of Microsoft 365. I don't think I actually have it says I can create one. I have a very basic account. I don't think I actually get this featured, honestly, but um, people that are paying or companies that are paying for Microsoft 365 um, can also create pages. So pages are like shared uh, chats that persist, right? And so it's, it's basically a shared workspace. So it's you and one or more coworkers together, uh, brainstorming, working together um, with Copilot as if Copilot was a human being that worked in your company. Um, this create tab is just like the thing I showed you for the consumer version. It's an all up place to, uh, to start new documents, presentations, work, book, books, et cetera. By default, you're not going to see any of the apps over here. Although I think if I were to launch a new app, I think Word will actually, it's going to make me sign in. So I'm just going to say no to that, but because I, I use my consumer account on this computer, but um, I believe as you start to run apps, the app icons will appear on the left as they do in the consumer version of this interface. And that way you can go directly into the app and you know access all that stuff as well. So that's the, that's the why. Um, I don't have anything configured. You know, I don't have pages set up or anything like that. Um, but, and I, because I haven't configured this as the owner and only employee in this business that doesn't really exist, I suppose if I said make a five-day Paris itinerary, I tin, I still can't say, it would probably do it. So this is going to go out. Uh, I don't know if it's trying to hit my corporate data back end and say, Paul, we didn't find any data related to a five-day. Uh, yeah, you see, this is not happening as quickly, right? So this is probably related to the fact that, A, I have no data, and B, it's, it started by trying to find my data, and when it failed it went to the web and now it's giving me this itinerary. So that's cool if you need it. I don't know. <laughs> so whatever. Um, but again, for most people watching this, you're probably not using this in a corporate sense. And so what you're going to see is this, and this is the, the normal, not normal, but the default interface, the, uh, the Microsoft account interface. So whether you're paying for Microsoft 365 personal or family or not, you'll see this, um, you will get Copilot eventually if you're paying for the subscription. If you're, uh, it it's branded this way, it's not actually Microsoft 365, but Copilot. It's really uh, the Copilot Plus or Pro features that used to be paid only now available to everyone with a subscription. Well, the primary account holder of any of any subscription, um, and then uh, the simplified interface for launching uh, new documents. And in this case, it did sign me in because I'm signed in as a uh, a non business jerk. <laughs> so. So there you go. Uh, if that doesn't make sense to you, I would just say, you know, wait six months because if Copilot has taught me anything, it's that nothing is ever the same and will ever stay the same. So uh, I'm sure it's going to change again. You know, that's that's what this past uh, year, year and a half has been like. So there you go. I hope that made sense. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. Uh, we'll have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can find out more at twit.com tv slash how thank you for watching thank you so much and especially to our club twit members if you're not a member of club twit it is only seven dollars per month for individuals you also have family and corporate plans uh, and you get access to all the great club twit content not just hands on windows but all the other um ad, uh, podcasts as well without ads and the video versions etc so it's uh, it's really worth it and uh, strongly recommend it so either way thank you so much i'll see you next week 